and welcome to another episode. What we've got here is Retro Bits, Sega Mega Drive 8 button, arcade pad, 2.4 gigahertz wireless, and it's compatible with the Sega Mega Drive, Sega Mega Drive Mini, PC or Mac, PS3 and Switch. And that comes down to, as I probably can see from here, it's got the two dongles, it's got the USB one and it's got the 9 pin one, which probably fits into other consoles and things. I will be testing that in a future episode. Let's have a look on the back. A few little fancy art pictures. You know, the D-pad, the six buttons, the back end of it for charging. Oh, deluxe storage case for controller, receivers and cable. Oh, that's nice. It mentions uh, 2.4 gigahertz wireless, compatible with blah, 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 blah. Rechargeable 500 milliamp battery, includes one meter Charging cable up to nine meters gaming range, sleep mode after five minutes. Um, includes instruction manual, an exclusive Sega case for controller, receivers, and cable storage. So let's get in into that then. Nothing particularly too fancy on the, the edges. No, nothing too edgy. I know I just popped it open, but seriously, this has only just arrived. Amazon have only just come knocking on the door. I've slit, you know, the little Salad tape, scotch tape circle thing that they put on everything nowadays. Or well, I've done for many years. Right, so slide it open. Oh, and there we go. Let's put the box to the side. So this sticky stuff about to come off now. Do I peel that off or do I do it before I pop it open? Ooh. Let's peel it off. Let's see what happens. Let's hope this all turns into a great recording. Whoa. Zip. Now it says retro bit down here. And maybe you just see all you can see all the reflections of everything I've got going on, can't you? Right. Very reflective. Now you can see my camera dangling from where it dangles, and it's got I heart. Let's have a look. Let's try to zoom in on this. Dum 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 dum. There we go. I heart L R A. I have no clue what that is. If anyone out there knows, please let me know. Shows you how <laughs> I don't know everything, which is a bit obvious anyway, I guess. But um, yeah, I really don't know what that's about. So let's pop it open. Oh. What do we do here? Is a some kind of a button thing? I push oh you push and lift the lid at the same time that uh it's got kind of a felty feeling very very dark isn't it let's try to pump up the light a little bit where are we there we go a bit more light yeah it's very felt looking but I've got a feeling it's just plastic you know that sort of stuff but is USB dongle just standard USB dongle and there's the 9 pin plastic finish isn't oh so great you can just about see that a bit of whiteness there I realise I'm pointing out a fault but and I've not even tested it yet but and I realise Doing plastic and everything is very, very fiddly. It's way beyond my means, but just happened to notice there isn't so. But it's definitely brand new. Both of the dongles have got a, you know, find me button sort of thing. Let's take this out. Let's put the gamepad to the side for a second and see what happens with this. Yep, it's plastic, but it's got that felt feeling, as I said before. USB cable, share a bit on your retro side, follow tag us on social media, retro bit gaming, question and comments on this product not turn out the way you wanted, let them know, thank you for your purchase. And then manual, which is probably just lots of different languages, yep, Italian, German, French. Spanish and English. 
So there's actually six buttons there, but there's a left and right shoulder button, and there's the home and select button, and there's a start button. So there's actually eight, more than eight fire buttons, but we know what they mean by, you know, the eight ones, because basically you've got sort of the same setup as a SNES one does. Um, but yeah, it tells you Mega Drive, Sega Saturn. Uh, how do you get the Sega Saturn going? Oh, you have to buy the Sega Saturn receiver separately. So there you go. It's possible to use it on the Sega Saturn, but you have to get a uh, different receiver. That could be interesting. I'll have to look into that one. Sega Drive, Sega Mega Drive Mini, PC for D input, PC X input, Mac, PS3, Android, and Switch. And then it explains which button corresponds to what. And then it explains what it said on the back of the box. Um, and it says connect the receiver using the console controller port. Once connected, the LED of the receiver will blink and indicate the search mode, press start on the controller, the LED on the controller will blink as well. Press and hold the sync button on the receiver, release the sync button once the button and the receiver and the color jellies remain solid. If you encounter an issue while pairing, you can reset the controller in one of two ways. Press and hold the start plus, sorry, start and the R for four seconds, so that must be the right shoulder button. Insert a thin metal wire, an unbent pemper clip for example, into the small hole on the back of the controller, gently pressing and hold until the LEDs stop glowing to restart the pairing process. Uh, charging, it just tells you that it will be charged when it's charged sort of thing. Sega Mega Drive, LED will be red and indicate the six button mode, and blue if it's a three button mode. To switch between the two modes, press and hold start B until the color changes. And basically the same again for if you're doing it for the, the Mini. No, no, so if you're hanging up to the Mini, it's if the LED on the controller is blue, press and hold the Start plus B until it changes to red. The controller will not function on the console if it's blue. And then explains all different things for the other ones as well. And then you go on to saying the same again in Spanish. So that's interesting. It, let's see what charging is. It's the uh, micro charger, so it's a bit of a shame it's not USB C, but it's uh, micro charging. I've got enough of those cables around, so I'll just put that back in there for now. Right, so. Oh, this is the bit where I'm trying to get back in again. <laughs> Never work in a factory, me. A packing factory. Maybe more in the middle there. There we go. That's in there. And I've got fluff all over the place now. It says any charge on it when you start it. There we go. Red. And it's trying to sink. So let me find something to plug this into and let's get going. So of course that thing being the Sega Mega Drive Mini, no idea why I didn't mention it. Anyway, let's get this sunk, oh, synced. Oh dear, I don't know the terminologies. All right, red light, power light, and it's trying to find it. So let's press start and hold it. Instantly finds it, which is great. Let's show you what I can see as well. As I say, this has never been used before, so Let's go get it going. So it says press A to confirm. Since I speak English, that makes sense. All right, somewhere on here, I know there's Street Fighter 2. There we go. So press A to select it. Press A again to start the game. Start. Press start again. Press start again. So, all the wonderful characters, just like we would have done back in the day. 
Let's start off with Kendo. I'm no Street Fighter 2 expert, especially on a gamepad. I prefer having an arcade stick. But um, let's see how far we can get. I have to say though, the, the few times I've pressed the button right now, it does seem to be fine. It's responding instantly, as far as I can tell. Right, let's get through some punches. Oh, whatever. Oh. Come on, John Lee, don't, don't do it to me. Fireball. Fireball. I meant to do that. Uh, anyway, let's try one more round, see how that goes. Yeah, it's responding instantly, for all I can say. It's got the same sort of feeling as the original gamepads. I took them out of the box and had a bit of a press around on them. Didn't actually turn the console or anything like that, just, just to press to see how they felt and they feel just the same. It's like a real Sega gamepad, but it's wireless, which I think is fantastic. I realise other companies have brought out theirs, but they theirs look more like the um, Saturn gamepad, whereas this looks like the Sega Mega Drive or the Genesis gamepad. So I'm really happy with that. Now let's see how we get back to the main menu, because I know if you press the reset button it brings you back to the main menu. Let's see how we do it on here. You press home, nothing, press select, and there we go, it brings up the main menu. I'm not interested in saving because I was probably losing anyway. Back to the main menu. And there we go, we've got different games, all the wonderful different games you can play. Off the top of my head, I have no idea which ones use six buttons or not. But as you can see, maybe, I'm pressing and things are happening the moment I expect them to happen. Let's turn off the silly background. Um, what other game could we possibly load up to have a look? What's this land strike? I don't think I've ever played this one. Is it? What did it say? Did I say? Oh, I don't know what it was called now. Land Stalker. Even. Oh, I'm guessing this is an RGP one. Start then. Ah. Oh, here's a problem. I'll do you. Is an intro thing. Probably an intro thing. I'm pressing start, but nothing's actually happening. There's annoying games where you got to sit and watch everything. That's probably not the greatest of games to watch then. Right. Let's play Dynamite Danny instead. Press start, press start.
So that's really nice that this is wireless. The buttons work just the way that I expect them to. Seems to be very responsive. I'm sure some people be like, oh, it doesn't work for that one frame. I'm not that good of a gamer. But this works. It means with having the select button, I can actually go backwards and forwards without the game. So having to get up and press a button while wirelessly, that's the important thing. Um, for me, I'll try the other dongle in something else that can handle that. Um, I might risk it on my Amiga, see what happens there. But as always, happy gaming.